Hi, I'm George and welcome to part two of the Typhoon series. In this episode, we go right back to the beginning and we start building some of the components for this rocket. If you want to see how the rocket flies, just click up here. Uh, but anyway, there's not a lot of time before the first launch, uh, so let's get started. We first start off by preparing the main drop that's going to be the diameter of the rocket. This PVC pipe is about 111 millimeters in diameter. We sand it with 800 grit sandpaper to remove any scratches or contaminants on the surface. Then we give it a coat of this mold release wax. It dries fairly quickly and so then you can just polish it off to get a nice finish. We did three coats of this just to really make sure the surface is smooth as possible. That helps with removing the tube. Here's the mirror-like finish you end up with. We're going to make the payload bay tube first. This rocket is mostly made of fiberglass, as it doesn't need to perform at peak material limits, and it's a lot cheaper too. Next we wrap glad baking paper around the tube, and we overlap each of the wraps by about 2 centimeters. This takes a bit of time to get right. You want to make sure that the paper is on tight but without any creases. We're using four wraps of 200 GSM cloth here. This is a bit of a test to see if four wraps is going to be strong enough. Once it is done, we put it on the rotisserie for a couple of hours while the epoxy gels. We add some heat lamps just to make that process a little faster. The next day we remove the tube from the mandrel. The careful mandrel prep makes this a breeze. Extracting the baking paper from inside the tube is also very easy. We use a piece of paper wrapped around the tube to give us a nice square line and then we trim and sand the ends of the tube. And as you can see the wall thickness is about a millimetre. This is only four wraps of 200 GSM and it's pretty squishy, uh, which won't do for a level two rocket. So we're gonna give this maybe three or four more wraps uh, just to make this super, super strong because that's gonna have the shock cord go over the edge and we don't wanna get a zipper in it, so. So we add another three wraps of the 200 GSM cloth followed by one wrap of the finer 85 GSM cloth for a smoother surface finish. The tube is a lot stronger now, that should work well, and the wall thickness is about 1.8 millimeters. Right, time to work on the nose cone. We first model it in CAD. Because this rocket's not going to be going supersonic, an elliptical nose is all that we really need. Unfortunately, our 3D printer's build space isn't tall enough, so we need to make it in two sections. Rather than making a mold like we normally do, we're going to use the print as a part of the structure of the nose cone. Because it is hollow, we can print the upper and lower halves at the same time. Two wall perimeters probably would have been enough, but because we want this to be a bit stronger, we did four perimeters. We can then glue the two halves together with a coupler ring. 
we probably could have molded half of this ring into one of the halves but eh, this was just as easy to do we're using the Araldite 24 hour epoxy for holding the halves together Then we applied 16 gauze of the 85 GSM fiberglass cloth to give the NOSCO strength. We added a few small triangles of fiberglass to go over the nose tip as well. After it's all cured we sand off any sharp edges. Time to make the motor tube. We're using this 56mm PVC pipe as the mandrel. We wanted a looser fit than the 54mm motor case because we will wrap it in cardboard and allow a small channel past the motor case to vent the pressure chamber. The motor is going to get hot and heat up the air inside of the pressure chamber, increasing the pressure. If we don't vent it, it will try and push the motor out. The mandrel preparation is the same as the main body tube. The motor mount tube is 6 wraps of 200 GSM fiberglass. Having left it overnight to cure, we can remove the tube from the mandrel. It then again gets trimmed and sanded. And we end up with a wall thickness of 1.3 millimeters. So the motor mount tube is, feels pretty strong. Um, I think that'll be fine. It's going to have one more layer put on uh, over the top and then even a, a thinner fiberglass over the top of that as well so that'll be fairly strong. Now that we have the motor mount tube and we know its exact internal dimensions we can make the nozzle that will fit into it. We decided to go with the same nozzle diameter as Dark Shadow of 15.6mm as we already have a launcher with a launch tube set up for that. This rocket could do with a larger nozzle but at the target launch pressure 15.6mm will be plenty. The nozzle is made from a 60mm round bar aluminium. It is just big enough to grab in our small lathe. Dad and I spent about 5 hours machining this puppy. We can't take very deep cuts because the lathe would stall, so it's a lot of shaving basically. Here's a quick montage of the process of extracting the nozzle from the chunk of metal. So that's it for this week. If you've got any questions about the techniques or the materials we used, uh, please ask them in the comments below. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to have a look at the construction of the pressure chamber, and we'll also find out how the rocket got its name and also how Air Command got its name. So until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.